Hello chess friends and welcome to Zard of Chess channel and welcome to my Nimzo Indian Defense series. So in this series we are following on a very nice and effective weapon while playing against d4. Today, today we continue with the series. This is now video number 3. With this introduction video it's number 4. So the today we do the so-called uh, classical variations. Uh, let's see uh, what what is this uh, classical variation of this Nimzo Indian. So we have d4 knight on f6, uh, c4 and here after e6 your opponent plays knight on c3, the, this uh, common classical line, and after bishop on b4, queen on c2. So this is now this so-called classical line of the in Nimzo Indian. Uh, white's idea is, of course, uh, to make progress with the move e4, because the queen is uh, supporting this e4 square, also preventing some knight on e4 pinning ideas. But uh, we can always uh, take take out this uh, knight again and uh, try to maybe double up, double up bones. Uh, if the queen takes, then of course white will lose the, the control of the e4 square. So these are the main ideas of blacks and white in these types of variations. So let's again remind us of this common rules of the Nimso Indian. So in order to get a better understanding of this video, uh, you should really follow all of my previous videos uh, because I've uh, I think uh, this uh, videos only make sense if you watch them combined so let's see how uh, this uh, main principles of the Nimtz Indian works so as I mentioned also in my previous videos uh, we have always uh, in 19 percent of this Nimtz Indian games we have this so-called bishop versus knight game so it means the knights of course love the closed game the bishops love the open game so that's why why when we maybe give up our bishop for knight uh, uh, we should really try to close the position on dark swords with some d6 e5 or even c5 or many of these blocking moves uh, um, on dark swords. so as i said fighting the bishop uh, it means that you should be really build it, build fortresses against the dark square bishop if uh, you of course uh, give up maybe your dark square bishop in the continuation of the game so uh, in order to battle against this bishop you should build fortresses with d6 e5 c5 b6 many many of these moves uh, just in order to keep uh, to restrict this uh, uh, dark square bishop's uh, ability to play um, as i also mentioned um, the battling set for pawn storm so you should never allow uh, your opponent to create a huge pawn storm in your center if that happens try to block the pawn storm but i've explained it uh, much much more in my previous videos today we'll have another line and here the pawn storm uh, the pawn storm game will not be not be uh, so important in this particular line so positional trades of pieces uh, that's uh, what i meant about this uh, trade trading of bishop versus knight first when we uh, trade off maybe our bishop for a knight in the continuation of uh, of the game one of our strategical ideas can be to trade off this large light square bishop so that's uh, in the continuation maybe white will lose then the bishop pair and will continue uh, the game with the bad bishop but uh, but really as i mentioned i've explained uh, everything in my previous videos uh, much much more and really we will have today a really, really different different for line it's really the simplified way uh, to play against this queen on c2 idea here uh, elements uh, the elements of the blockade you should be really familiar with uh, you should really try to create blocking systems uh, not cr allowing some dynamic pawn structures keeping the center closed is one of the most important principles of the nimzo indian uh, going into favor favorable end game it means when you maybe uh, create a double uh, double pawn structure in your opponent's position when we have uh, double pawns by white then going into a favorable endgame is also a strategical idea because uh, then uh, of course with a better pawn structure uh, in this simplified uh, lines maybe with trading all of our pieces down is a good it's a good continuation for black because as i said with healthier pawn structure it's not so bad to to go into an endgame uh, exploiting weaknesses uh, here in this video will not have this so many of these elements of the weakness uh, we will have a more more positional game uh, because here in this after queen on c2 white's idea is uh, to of course after bishop on c3 to recapture with the queen on c3 and not allow uh, white to uh, black to double on, uh, double up the pawns here on the c file so of course we have maybe an tempo here with knight on e4 but uh, here after queen on c2 again you have to decide what to do here with the knight you have to support it but now uh, white's idea would be the spawn breaks from d5 so i think here uh, white would have a favorable favorable middle game 
So after this queen on c2, my recommendation is to go in this fast development. As I said, the, the Nimtso Indian is uh, really a great opening because you can apply this fast development systems. You can play simply now knight on c6. This is very important attacking the d4 pawn and uh, here uh, white has several options. Let's first see this option if white uh, defends this uh, defend this pawn with knight on f3. Here, as I said, we have uh, we should re really board, build these fortresses on dark horse with the idea to push the pawn on e5. Here, after bishop on g5, you have simply you can really simply uh, kick uh, kick the bishop away. If your opponent plays the move uh, h4, bishop on h4, you have g uh, g5, bishop on g3, and now we can play simply g4. There is now a mistake that. Um, white can do uh, if white tries something like i don't know knight on h uh, knight on h4 or knight on d2 here you can really take uh, this pawn if uh, queen on uh, queen on a4 with a double attack on the king and and on the bishop you have simply bishop on d7 and if uh, white takes here then we have knight on c2 but this tactical motive was uh, much more explained in my introduction video of the series so here uh, in the continuation uh, after g4 white has to play a counter attack with the move d5 but uh, this is uh, now the common theory of this um, classical variation you have to take e takes d5 after uh, uh, c takes d5 now we have knight on d5 we, ha we can grab another pawn and now bishop bishop on h4 and uh, of course you have to retreat with the queen somewhere bishop uh, queen on d7 is the common idea and the instructive game that i wanted to show you in this particular variation is a game played by uwe budensik against the wolfgang unziker wolfgang unziker a strong master uh here after queen on d7 we have rook on d1 and of course we want to get out of this uh, d-file mess that's why protecting also the, uh, the knight is very important here um e4 was played bishop on c3 now comes this idea we have now b takes c3 and at least you see we have created a weak pawn structure here now we have two isolated pawns and this is what i talked about exploiting weak weaknesses as i said now these two pawns on c3 and a2 will become the main targets uh, of, of our attack so here um, in the continuation g takes f3 was played by wolfgang unziker and rook takes on d5 had to be played because of course you cannot take with the e pawn because of the pin uh, by the queen on the king so f takes g2 bishop on g2 and let's see now the position we have six pawns uh, white has only five pawns and it's not so so much uh, it's really not a healthy pawn structure that white has here uh, with many isolated pawns and uh, that's why it's uh, good to battle here you have to of course compete against these bishops but uh, here I think uh, really, really with the blocking system you can really go into favorable endgame here queen on g4 uh, counter attack very nice uh, you, uh, forcing the bishop to retreat on g3 and now bishop on e6 here rook on um, b5 and here castling on queen side it's really a common idea sometimes uh, in the Nimtso Indian to sometimes delay a little bit uh, castling and now castling queen side is perfectly fine here after queen on a4 we have h6 a6 uh, attacking the rook the rook has to retreat and now knight on e5 a very nice move blocking move again i'm pointing out that we are playing on a blockade here uh blocking out this bishop and also uh, blocking a potential e5 move because this uh, this move would be really deadly and we would open here this diagonal for the light square bishop so castling we have bishop on d7 getting a tempo queen on b3 and now bishop on c6 and this is now completely better position for for black because we have now a good good diagonal of course it's also hard now for white to trade off this li uh, light square bishops because then white will have light square problems here with potential knight on f3 ideas queen on h3 and even some checkmate threats on g2 so that's why f4 here knight on d3 rook on d2 and here knight on c5 was played queen on b4 h5 simply keeping attacking here uh, queen on g6 rook on g2 rook on g8 i'm not going to explain you now the whole game i just wanted to show you the 
the whole game i will also uh, send you all of these games in the description below so you can analyze them for yourselves here uh queen uh, bishop on f2 queen on h7 bishop on d4 rook takes bishop takes uh, rook on g8 king on f2 and here knight on d3 with the fork and it was game over for uh, for, for white so let's see now another uh, example uh, here after queen on c2 we have now the similar a similar position you see we're waiting uh, here we have again this move knight on f3 protecting this move d4 again i'm recommending here to go into this fortress building the fortress d6 with the preparation to play the move e5 bishop on g5 again we're playing the same line h6 and now uh let's see what what can happen if your opponent doesn't go into this aggressive line if he plays here the move bishop on d2 here of course castling uh simply healthy move here uh a3 and now we take bishop takes on c3 bishop takes on c3 and now rook on e8 uh castling and here queen on e7 with the preparation to push the pawn on e5 as i said uh the main element uh, of uh, of the nimso indian is to create the blockade or the or fortress against this dark square bishop so of course this queen on e7 uh, comes with the idea to push the pawn here on e5 e3 e5 uh, very nice simply blocking out the bishop uh, here on d5 and now uh, we have knight on b8 it's it is a little bit strange this move but uh, now this bishop is out of game and uh, here we want to of course play knight on d, uh, d, uh, d7 knight on c5 and then maybe even a5 to create a blocking system on on uh, on uh, on the queen side uh, and uh, really force maybe uh, white even to try some b4 moves just in order to weaken uh, weaken the king after castling here h3 knight on d7 was played we have g4 knight on c5 and here b4 was played and here knight on uh, knight on um, e4 if you try something like bishop on d3 this is a mistake knight takes on uh knight takes on c3 queen takes and here we have a fork uh on e4 so that's why um here bishop on b2 was played c6 you see black is even faster here on the attack because now the c file will get opened and this is very dangerous because here with this advanced c4 and b4 pawns uh white has also left some spaces behind uh has really uh, some holes in, in front of the king here b d takes c6 was played b takes c6 and now uh, bishop on d3 and it seems now that this knight is trapped but here uh black found a very nice counterplay i'm sorry i didn't uh, tell you which game it is uh, it's peter varga against victor bologan victor bologan also a very powerful strong and strong uh, grandmaster here uh, c5 you see we're trying now to open finally the queen side with some rook on b8 ideas attacking here on b2 knight uh, bishop takes on e4 knight takes on e4 queen takes on e4 and now we have bishop on b7 of course if the queen retreats we can grab this knight and this would be a favorable favorable continuation for white so that's why white to had to play here the move uh, rook on d5 we have uh, c takes mm, b5 4 a takes b4 and now rook on uh, c8 uh, king on b1 and now a5 simply trying to open the position here uh, b5 you see white is desperately trying now to close the position uh, and here after rook on c5 we have rook on d1 and now rook on c8 here after knight on uh, d4 we have bishop takes on d5 c takes uh, d5 and um, as i said i'm not going to show you the whole game here after queen on b7 and uh, knight on uh, knight on c6 after rook takes on b5 i think black has a good game here because the bishop is still blocked out uh, you need you need to play many defensive moves here in order to, to protect this bishop to have to regroup a little bit and i don't think that white has a better position here so um let's see now another example let's see now the, this example after knight on c6 if your opponent plays the move e3 you see with this e3 move uh, white showed a little bit his cards and this is really too passive so that's why my recommendation here is really to break the position immediately with the move e5 you see how healthy this uh, Nimzo Indian opening is because with this fast development of pieces, with a good, good central control, we can even create this um, uh, immediate pawn breakthroughs in the center. Although it mm, breaks a little bit the principles in chess, here e5 is perfectly fine. Here after d5, we have knight on e7. Knight from g2, 
E2 was played and this is now a very nice idea by white if that happens to you uh, stop a little bit and think about the position because white's idea is now to play the move a3 and after bishop takes on c3 to recapture with knight a knight from g to e2 on c3 and then push the pawn on e4 and uh, white will continue then with the bishop pair uh, but with no no weaknesses in the position so this would be really, really a good position for the bishops so that's why uh, here in the game, uh, Sergei uh, uh, Georgans against uh, Nikita Vityugov. Here, uh, Black tried in the move a6 because now uh, we have at least forced some uh, weird uh, knight moves here, knight from g2 e2. Now we can play simply after g3, castling uh, bishop on g2, and you see now the d6. But now, after a potential a3, we can play simply bishop on c5 and then a bishop on a7, and this bishop will stay on this very nice diagonal. So. Be careful, as I mentioned, if your opponent plays this knight from g2 e2 idea, uh, don't uh, allow your opponent to play this a3, then you're really forced to may maybe play this bishop takes on c3, but after knight on c3, uh, white will really have a better game. So that's why here you see after a casting with bishop on c5 was played, now we uh, we put this bishop on another uh, diagonal, which is also a very, very powerful diagonal for the bishop. Here, rook on uh, b1 was played, and now h5. Uh, here, uh, we have now this so called blocked pawn structure in the center, so it means that uh, this direction of the attack uh, shows us uh, sh this direction of the pawn structure in the center shows us that uh, black will coordinate his attack. On the on the king side and here of course with this uh, maybe advanced pawn after a couple of moves after potential e4 of course white will coordinate the attack here on the queen side with potential b4 and even c5 moves this is now a pawn structure similar to the king's indian setups and i've created uh, over uh, 45 videos uh, in the king's indian series so if you want to have a more aggressive way to play against d4 you can also check out my king's indian videos but uh, here it's really with the so-called king's indian pawn structure in the center so now we have the elements of the king's indian and now we want to create a fast attack here on the on the king side with moves as f5 uh, g5 uh, h5 h4 g4 so many many of the spawn breakthrough moves uh, just in order to open the position because now after this um, uh, pawns on dark squares now this bishop on uh, on light on this light square is very very powerful and it comes very often in the nimzo indian that the light square bishop is very good uh, because of course we give give up uh, our dark square bishop so uh, but then build a fortress on dark squares and then uh, the the activity of this bishop is really really powerful so here h3 we have knight on uh, h7 e4 and now f5 here uh, really comes this king's indian move it's uh, uh, breaking through here on the um, on the king side we want to open out the position we want to open the the f file here uh, we have b4 bishop on a7 you see how important this a6 move was after this knight from g2 e2 idea so that's why queen on d3 here and now f takes uh, e4 knight takes on e4 and now bishop on f5 here uh, black has a good coordination of, of the pieces on the king side bishop on e3 bishop takes on e3 queen takes on e3 and now queen on d7 now we have finally uh, develop uh, finished our development the rooks are connected all of the pieces are playing very well uh, from if we watch this activities of these two bishops this bishop is a little bit blocked out by its own pawn and this bishop is perfectly fine controlling very nice diagonal so if you just uh, compare these two bishops i think black has a favorable game here so ki uh, king on h2 was played and now rook on f7 of course doubling up on the uh, on the f file uh, knight on c3 was played bishop on g6 we have queen on d2 as i mentioned i'm not going to explain this um, game from a tactical point of view i just uh, wanted to show you how uh, this first moves were very easily in the nimzo indian against this cla uh, classical variation with the move queen on c2 and now uh, i wanted just to show you the, the whole game uh, without this uh, deep deep analysis of particular moves here simple idea rook on f8 doubling up the, up the rooks uh, rook on e1 and here h4 simply trying to open the position here we have c5 Queen on d8 and now a3, very nice move now, knight on f5, knight on e2, knight takes on g3, 
very very powerful uh, if you take uh, with the pawn then we have rook takes on f1 after rook takes on f1 rook takes bishop takes and now bishop takes on e4 so uh, after this knight on g3 h takes g3 here um, black uh, won the game very easily because you see we have now a very very healthy pawn structure in the center and uh, black won the game uh, still many moves were played but uh, black won the game eventually with some with some nice nice end game skills so let's see now another example of this uh, of this uh, e3 line uh, the other game that i wanted to show you in this particular line it's a game played by Val vladimir tukmakov against uh, nukim rachovsky and here again after uh, the queen on c2 and the uh, knight on c6 here uh, e3 was played by white and again we are trying the spawn breakthrough in the center after the move d5 you can also try sometimes uh, to take immediately this uh, knight on c3 after queen on c3 here uh, knight on e uh, e7 was played but you should never never trade off this um, uh, knight if we, if you don't secure a block pawn structure in the center now when the pawn structure in uh, in the center is blocked now we can really battle with this knight because now this activity of this bishop is not good it's blocked out by its own pawn here also this bishop is uh, not so good because it's blocked out by its own pawn here on c4 so bishop on e2 castling castling was played the knight in g6 just improving the position of this knight here we have b4 again we have the same idea as i mentioned uh, black will coordinate the attack because the spawns are showing us the direction and here with his b4 move uh, white showed all already his cards that he's gonna probably try some pawn breakthroughs with the move c5 a5 was played trying to slow down a little bit the white's attack and here knight on e4 also a common idea in the nimzo indian kicking away the queen and now f5 very nice supporting the knight and now you have to weaken a uh, weaken uh, maybe uh, your king with the move f3 in order to kick away the knight here bishop on b2 was played a takes b4 a takes rook takes on a1 bishop takes on a1 and now knight on g5 we have knight on knight on d2 and this is now a very important move f4 this is now a huge advantage i think for black uh, because uh, uh, the coordination of these two knights are really is really really good because these knights are controlling very nice squares around white's king and now the bishop also is uh, having a good diagonal we have an open uh, we will create an open f file so that's why here after knight uh, e takes f4 knight takes on f4 this uh, this knight is really really powerful so that's why knight on e4 was played knight takes on e4 queen takes and now queen on uh, g5 of course with an immediate checkmate threat so um, so that's why here uh, g3 was played by by white in order to kick away the queen and here bishop on f5 <coughs> Queen on e3 and now queen on g6 still you cannot take of course this knight the knight stays there uh, for a little bit and here rook on c1 was played knight takes on e2 queen takes on e2 and here queen on g uh, bishop on g4 queen on f1 and here queen on h5 and again i wanted to show you now this position we have uh, now really weird position for white because uh, white lost the uh, bishop or the slice for bishop and now white has the slice for problems and the uh, black also won this game very very nice and still um, of course white has some counterplay here with the move c5 but uh, this uh, like for weaknesses were too much to handle and uh, at the end of this video i just wanted to show you this particular line if you if your opponent trade off this uh, pawn in the center so the instructive game that i wanted to show you, it's a game played by andre summits against uh, sergey uh, zagrebli and here uh, black tried to play the move e5 immediately and let's see what happens if your opponent trades off this uh, uh, pawn in the center so after d takes e5 it's not a problem you can simply take because here after bishop on e2 we can play the most active move bishop on g4 and if your opponent tries something like to advance the pawn here uh to have a good space control in the center you can simply take the key defender of this uh, very weak square after bishop on f3 we have now the possibility to play knight on d4 cementing the knight and here after maybe queen on d1 we can also play something like c6 because there's no way um, that uh, white will create an outpost here on d5 so that's why you see it will be really, really hard to kick away this uh, knight from the d4 square basically you have to give up maybe your good bishop here because the bishop now the dark square bishop has a good activity but it has to compete against this very powerful knight on d4 after castling here 
uh, bishop takes on c3 again with the same idea after queen on c3 we have now this very powerful move uh, 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 e4 knight on d4 and now bishop takes on uh, the uh, bishop takes on e2 knight takes on e2 and now queen on d6 and as and again i don't want to to show the, the whole game again i'm pointing out with this advanced pawn on e4 uh blacks uh, this uh, activity of the dusk or bishop is not so good so i think this is uh, really playable and uh, in this game uh, this game ended in a draw but i think it's still still uh, good to continue here from because uh, white will need many moves maybe with the move b3 and bishop in b2 but still this advanced pawn is really a huge uh, huge space advantage because in the next move we can also try something like knight on e5 and some outposts on d3 okay let's go back as i mentioned uh, this is the most important thing to remember in this uh, classical line after queen on c2 my recommendations are to play the move knight on c6 uh, as i mentioned uh, the nimzo indian is really an opening uh, because you can f uh, it's a great opening because you can play on this fast development here after queen on c2 with knight on c6 forcing really um why to do something the common ideas of whites are knight on f3 and e3 but you see uh with this d6 after that an e5 the common idea the slow setup here in the center uh by black is perfectly fine with some castling possibilities still also after d6 e5 to liberate this uh, um, this light score bishop i think really this is the best continuation if you want to be um, good Nimzo Indian player I think uh, you should try this system because uh, really it comes with its most natural natural ways to play against this uh, very very um, aggressive way of white because as I mentioned if you allow uh, your opponent to play something like e4 and e5 without counterplay in the center I think it could be really really deadly for you Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Meanwhile, you can watch my other uh, Nimzo Indian videos with this introduction video and some more, uh, more and more uh, of these videos will continue to uh, um, continue with the sidelines because the sidelines are also important. Uh, sometimes we uh, miss some sidelines, we are not prepared, and then we lose some games because we don't know really these openings. As I said, in this series, we'll have many, many videos. I think we will have at least. 40 videos in this Nimzo Indian series, so be prepared. We'll have a good preparation against this very annoying D4 move. Okay, as I said, meanwhile, you can watch my other Nimzo Indian videos and you can also watch my King's Indian uh, series videos in which I show you also an effective way how to play against D4. And you can also watch my Hyper Accelerated Dragon Sicilian videos if you want to have a good weapon while playing against E4. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content. Thanks you for watching, guys, and just the best, of course.